Hi, welcome to today's lesson on isotopes. Today's question of the day is, what is the purpose of neutrons? So to begin, we have the definition of isotopes, which is two or more atoms of the same element, each with a different number of neutrons. I sometimes describe it as having a weird number of neutrons. Um, here we have two different nuclei. Obviously, they're lithium because we have three protons. That's what makes it lithium. It's number three on the periodic table. And here we have lithium with three neutrons. And here we have lithium with four neutrons. And truthfully, the only difference is that one lithium is heavier than the other. That's all. It's really that simple. Um, sometimes nature makes atoms a little heavier than she made other atoms. So here we have isotopic notation, which shows the mass number on the top and the atomic number on the bottom right beside the element's symbol. Lithium is Li. It's always going to be atomic number three, regardless of its mass, because Again, the atomic number is the number of protons, which for lithium is three. And then this number on top represents everything in the nucleus, the number of things in the nucleus. So that's the sum of the protons and the neutrons, which is how here we have six and over here we have seven. Now the mass number, again, is the sum of the protons and the neutrons, and it's always going to be represented as a whole number. And the reason for that is because we can't have half a proton or half a neutron. They only come in holes. Here we have carbon, uh, each of them, again, atomic number is six. The mass number on top represents the number of things in the nucleus, protons and neutrons. So here I know without even counting that carbon has six neutrons, and that's because the 12 minus the six protons will give me the six neutrons. Over here, we have 13 nucleons, sometimes they're called, in the nucleus. Um, so the 13 minus the 6 is going to indicate that I have 7 neutrons in this carbon. And if we were to count them, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The atomic number on the bottom, again, represents the number of protons in the atom. And all atoms of the same element have the same atomic number. That's what makes them that particular element. So 35 protons or atomic number of 35, bromine. Atomic number of 6 or 6 protons carbon. So I was alluding to this before, the mass number minus the atomic number is going to give us the number of neutrons in a nucleus. The reverse is also true. If you had the number of neutrons and the atomic number and added that together, you could get the mass number. So I would like for you to pause this video, see if you can fill this in, um, knowing that this is an atom of element B, that's boron. Um, See what you can do. The atomic number of boron is five. That's indicated by its atomic number right here. The mass number is 12 up at the top. This means um, the atomic number being five, that we have five protons. It also means that we have five electrons because we are talking about an atom, which is going to be electrically neutral. Protons is gonna be equal to the electrons every time for atoms. And then the neutrons is where you have to think a little bit. You can't just read. The neutrons is going to be determined by taking the mass number of 12, 12 things in the nucleus, minus the five that we know are protons, leaves us with seven neutrons. One more example. See if you can do this for element um, U, which is uranium. All right, the atomic number here is 92, which is indicated on the bottom. That's our atomic number. That is also the number of protons and the number of electrons because we're talking about an atom. At the tippy top, our mass number is 238, meaning there's 238 particles in the nucleus. They are either protons or neutrons. Knowing that there are 92 protons, we could subtract that number from the number of things in the nucleus to come out with 146 neutrons. And that's it. That's as simple as isotopes get. I uh, urge you to rewatch the video if you have struggled with it. If you still aren't getting it, leave some questions in the comments section below. I would love to help you out. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.